A new month means more new exclusives, including an all-new Nerd Rant, plus over 120 videos to binge in the back catalog. Support the habit at patreon.com slash dosabuckley, and come see me at Forest City Comic Con June 25th. The phenomenon of Amy Schumer's popularity is similar to, like, Nickelback or Survivor or Dane Cook. At the height of their popularities, you didn't know one person who publicly liked those things. Maybe they did in private, but you certainly knew a lot of people who hated them. And yet, they were incredibly popular. Nickelback and Dane Cook sold out arenas. Survivor was the highest rated show on TV. I don't know, maybe I can understand. I drink like a case of coke a week and eat fast food every three or four days. So, I also love consuming absolute shit with no redeemable qualities. And so, it would probably be fair to say that Amy Schumer is the most popular female comedian right now. It would also be unfortunate to say, in a world where Nikki Glaser, Jenna Friedman, Kathleen Madigan, and Wanda Sykes all exist, that Amy Schumer is the most popular female comedian right now. I want to recap her 2022 so far, starting with the Oscars. Many of you might not know this, despite her best efforts to ensure that you knew this, but Amy Schumer was one of the hosts of this year's Oscars. You know, the one where Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, and that's all anyone talked about for like two weeks. Three days after the show, everything's slowing down a little, Amy heads to Instagram to make it about herself. After jokingly plugging her new show and tour, she says, still triggered and traumatized. Loves her friend Chris Rock, what a pro, Will Smith in pain, blah, blah, blah. Then she says, I'm proud of myself and my co-hosts, but yeah, waiting for this sickening feeling to go away from what we all witnessed. <laughs> you know, if I was Chris Rock's friend, maybe what I'd do is talk about how I hope he's okay, not, oh, I'm proud of myself for how I handled it. It was so triggering for me. I'm traumatized. Me, me, me. Quick, I gotta make this about myself. Then, a few weeks later, basically throws her so-called friend under the fucking bus. Because of course, Chris Rock wasn't the only one making jokes about the other celebrities. All the hosts and presenters did. But Amy makes a point of going on Stern to tell the world, well, I got permission from Leonardo DiCaprio to do the joke that I did about him. He said, go ahead. Here's the joke, by the way. Leonardo DiCaprio, what can I even say about him? It's, he's done so much to fight climate change and leave behind a cleaner, greener planet for his girlfriends. <laughs> because he's older and... The and they're younger. Okay, you get it. Now, if that seems a little familiar, that's because this same joke, nearly word for word, went viral a year ago. And not from some nobody either. It was from former Colbert writer Nicole Conlin, whose version, by the way, is way funnier because it doesn't have to have some hacky fucking explanation at the end. Like, how shit is that? She gets the laugh and then proceeds to just toss a big old pile of cow shit on a campfire by going, because he's older and they're younger. You get it. Yeah, that's why they're laughing. They clearly did before that. Anyway, it really feels like a big old fuck you to Chris Rock. It sounds like she's saying, I got permission, unlike some people. And she wasn't done making this whole thing about herself there. <laughs> oh no. A few days later, she's doing stand-up in Vegas, and she says, I think the best way to comfort ourselves would be for me to say the Oscar jokes that I wasn't allowed to say on TV. <laughs> like, hey, Will Smith, you know how you're the bad guy from the Oscars? Well, let me just go ahead and jump on that grenade for you for some unknown fucking reason. The joke she, quote, wasn't allowed to say on TV? Don't look up is the name of a movie. More like, don't look down the barrel of Alec Baldwin's shotgun. So, if for some reason you don't know, Alec Baldwin accidentally shot and killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of the movie Rust during the rehearsal of a scene involving a gun. Investigation's still ongoing, they're trying to figure out if it was a live round, a blank that discharged incorrectly, if it was sabotage, either way, she was upset that they wouldn't let her make a joke about Alec Baldwin accidentally murking someone to an audience that, very likely, could have included people who were on that set, who might actually be traumatized by watching a gun go off and kill a woman. 
Oh, but Amy Schumer had to see someone get slapped, and that traumatized her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now, sure, I bet the Oscars would get even more press if they had her and Jeff Ross fucking come out and do a goddamn roast of the In Memoriam segment. But anyway, Amy then backtracks after getting shit on for this, going, I was never going to tell that joke. So she's too cowardly to even own her own shit. Then she still hasn't fucking wrung enough out of the Oscars. She's at the Netflix is a joke comedy festival in early May. Same one, by the way, where Dave Chappelle got attacked on stage. So you'd think someone might consider this woman a bad omen. But anyway, she's on stage there. This is a month and a half after the Oscars. And she tells this joke that she also apparently wasn't allowed to say. So my husband was going down on me. <laughs> or as he calls it, Squid Game. <laughs> so... He's in my nightmare alley, uh, my house of Gucci. <laughs> and I say, come on, come on, you know. He goes tick, tick, boom, he bells fast. I say, get off my dune, and that's how our son was born. What do you think? Because <laughs> it's all movie names and the name of a popular show. Ha 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 ha. Fuck. The joke has severe problems right from the start. Like, he calls going down on you Squid Game? Like your pussy has tentacles? It was just saying the name of a popular show to get a cheap pop. There's where you use your don't look up reference. Say, he's going down on me and his motto is always, don't look up. Makes way more sense than Squid Game. But it's just shit anyway. See, this is how you know when she's definitely written a joke and hasn't stolen it. When it's fucking straight garbage. People love to defend her on that, though. I saw a Twitter thread where someone was going off about how Amy Schumer's actually really great. She's just the target of misogyny. Probably some dumb broad saying that. <laughs> no, 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 no. But anyways, someone replies, her material is often very good because she steals it from better comedians. A person replies, name one comedian she stole from. <laughs> well... Besides the tweet we saw earlier, there's a guy by the name of Brandon Farley on YouTube who has a 26-minute compilation video of Amy ripping off ideas or flat-out stealing jokes from people. Like this example. Here's Wendy Liebman, appeared on every late-night show in the 90s, had an HBO special. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I like it when the guy pays <laughs> for sex. I, I mean that. And then here's Amy's version of the joke. I'm very old school. I think the guy should always pay on the first date for sex. Wendy kills the delivery. Meanwhile, Amy's delivery was as if she's just reading it off her hand. Like Bart doing jokes at the burlesque house that he didn't even understand. So I don't get her popularity. I think it's just that she has a really good publicist. Like mid-May 2022, she was trending because she had COVID and was quote, bored in quarantine. Who the fuck cares about celebrities getting COVID in 2022? After Tom Hanks survived and Idris Elba got it from Trudeau's wife, wink wink, everyone stopped giving a shit. But I will say, I totally understand Amy's issue there. I'd be bored too if the only person I could be around was Amy Schumer. Anyway, she's heading out on tour this summer and fall. Want to know what clever name she's given her tour? The Whore Tour. Like, this is the level of comedy you'd expect from an open mic or 2010 Buckley. It's not clever, it's not subtle. And just to be clear, the word doesn't offend me. The lack of trying is what offends me. Amy, you like movie puns? Here's your chance. How about calling it Star Whore Revenge of the Slit? Poster could be you with a big glowing red dildo. Or how about Amy's World Tour, but someone has spray painted an H before the O and an E after the R, and then maybe they've spray painted something else on ya. Nope, just here's me looking shocked, fully clothed, holding a pillow over my tit that says Whore Tour, Five minutes of effort put into the whole thing. Who cares? I'm going to sell all these shows out anyway to all the mouth breathers who think my shitty delivery of stolen material is fucking hilarious. Maybe it could have been called Horrible. Picture of you with a notepad and a bunch of DVDs of other comedians' material all over your desk. But anyway, Amy, you are my choice for the worst comedian of 2022, no matter what comes out for the rest of this year. 
Jeff Dunham could release a special featuring a new puppet called Zimzer, the non-binary Gen Z millennial that just screams, everything offends me, while a bunch of slack-jawed morons in the audience wet themselves laughing, and I'd go, well, at least someone put some effort into making the puppet. Oh, and to top it all off, the cherry on this shit Sunday, she's recently become best pals with Kim Kardashian, appearing on Kim's new Hulu show, where it was revealed that Amy helped Kim prepare for her appearance on SNL. It's the perfect headline. Woman who got famous despite having no discernible talents mentors Kim Kardashian.